What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Matt Brill, here to tell you guys about my friends from Big Friendly Productions. Now, they specialize in creating merchandise for bands, artists, and even lifestyle brands. With their in-house equipment, they can provide shirts, branded hats, and more, as well as some graphic design services. They offer order fulfillment to handle your online orders and ship your merch straight to your fans from their shop. Down in good old Birmingham, Alabama, baby. Now, whether you are getting your first shirt, you're just starting out, or you're going on a 40 show run, Run, hit them up for all your merchandising needs. Check out their website, bigfriendlyproductions.com, or shoot them an email, merchandising at bigfriendlyproductions.com. Now we're going to get into the episode. This is Outside the Round with Matt Brill. Also, make sure you guys like, rate, subscribe, tell your mama and them. And for more details and uh, to get in touch with the rest of the familia, visit raiserowdy.com. Now let's get into it. Outside the Round with me, Matt Brill, a Raised Rowdy podcast. This is Outside the Round with Matt Burrill for Rage Rally Podcast. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Outside the Round with me, Matt Burrill. Uh, Today we have got a very special guest um, and a tie for the youngest guest that we have had on this podcast with our good buddy, Mr. Mason Horn. Um, He's a guy that... um, was sent our way by our good friend, Mr. Peyton Heben. And um, it's been really cool to watch him grow, not even being in town yet, still being in college, but there being such a buzz around him. Uh, he's got some music out there on Spotify. Y'all give it up for our boy. We got Mr. Landon Smith, the pride of McDonough, Georgia, not <laughs> yeah. Statesboro, not like sh- we said a few episodes back with Wyatt. <laughs> um, how you been doing, bud? Been good, man. Just working, music, and... That's about it. Finished my uh, online school. So that's hey, what are you majoring in? Logistics. Logistics. Yes. It sounds smart. It does. But it's not. So what are what are like what what are what's a logistics class like? So I, I don't take any logistics classes yet. It's just like, you know, the the ones leading up to your business. It's just like the core classes you have to take. But logistics is it's pretty simple. It's getting one thing one thing to another place and figuring out how to do it. Okay. So, you know, I feel like I'm good. I'm good at walking and shit. Yeah. So. Nick, Nikki T, my business partner with Ray's Rowdy, he used to work in logistics, but he works for like a food, like a company yeah, that yeah, would, yeah. Per, he would tell all, tell um, Olive Garden through like <laughs> spreadsheets and all that shit, how many breadsticks they needed to make sure they didn't run out of breadsticks or this or that. So he used to go around and be like, you, you ever go to Olive Garden? People be like, yeah. And he's like, well, you like the breadsticks? And then he would be, and then they'd be like, yeah. And he'd be like, well, you're welcome. I make <laughs> sure they have that me. shit. <laughs> so logistics are like, I mean, that's, but not to be now, you're not really, you're still focused with school and everything, but it sounds like life has taken a bit of a wild turn here the last like two years, right? Year and a half, two years, and not even less than that. Five or six months. Five or six months? This all started January. No shit. I swear. Yeah. Like it's, playing music or just like not putting pl- music out or what? I've been playing music uh, since like second grade. That's when I started guitar lessons. Okay. So I've always been like into it and that was my thing. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd have my hobbies, whether that be like uh, backpacking or sh- sports or shit. And then I would slowly get out of it. But the whole time it was music and it, I just stuck with it. And so it was, uh, you know, just all throughout high school and first semester of college. And then come January, this totally like (laughs) I thought I took it seriously. And then all this shit started happening. I'm like, oh, so I wasn't taking it seriously. This is what actual serious. Yeah. So what were you doing? Like playing at like high school parties or playing at like playing in church? Because I feel like the playing in church thing is a common thing for guys and girls from Georgia. Oh, yeah, definitely. Since from the south, I uh, so I went to a private Christian school and uh my mom was in the nicest way trying to say, you're getting on my nerves, man. You, I got to get you out of my class. She was a teacher. So she was like, I got to get you out of my classroom so I can do some work on Thursdays. She was like, uh, found this guitar teacher who does uh, guitar lessons at the school, started and didn't stop till uh, I was out of high school. Oh, wow. So oh, yeah. guitar is like a real passion for you. So you're not just a, a writer and a guy that can sing his ass off, but the playing the guitar, like you feel most comfortable when you have that, when you have that git fiddle in your hand. Definitely. It's like, uh, I, I, I can sing on stage, just me and a mic, but it's just, it's like something's missing. Yeah. So I have to have that guitar. But, uh, 
Yeah, started second grade, just kept with it. Um, went to a different high school than my elementary and middle school and met some guys that played and started a band. And what was, what was the band called? I love high school band names. All right, we have two. You have two? Okay. Two band names. First one was Saving Fika. Saving Fika? Who's Fika? Fika. That's, that's okay. This is cool, right? <laughs> so we were like, you know, I mean, we were high school students experimenting with things, and we were like, we got to have, like, we got to come up with a cool thing, you know? And so I remember being in my friend's room, and we are like, we got to come up with a band name. We got to come up with a band name. We want it to be weird, quirky, and shit. So I'm on Pinterest. You're on Pinterest. Oh, dude, I fucking ladies, love Pinterest. Ladies, he goes on Pinterest. Pinterest That's a big thing. Pinterest is my shit. No shit. I love it. I've never been on it, but every girlfriend that I've had has been on Pinterest and been like, babe, look at this thing. And I'm like, I, I don't, I've never understood it. It, it, dude, if you like, oh, dude, I got something Friday. You're just like outfits for men with green jacket. Bam. You got a whole outfit. Okay, ready for good you. It's, to know. It's awesome. We're going to get Sweet Boy on Pinterest because he, <laughs> he tends to wear the same, the same couple shirts and hats. We'll get him on Pinterest. But so you were on Pinterest and that's I, where the yeah, thing Yeah, I was on Pinterest and I saw this word fika and it's a Swedish word for uh, coffee or tea time. And it's, it, it sounds weird, but then you go deeper into the meaning of it and if I'm not mistaken, the Swedes would do this thing. It's like uh, they would take a time out of their day, no matter what was going on, and whoever they're around, whether it be coworkers, family, friends, random people, and just have a time to sit, drink tea or coffee, and just kind of relax and just kind of appreciate what's around them. Yeah. And I thought that was the coolest fucking thing. <laughs> I was like, dude, that's it. So we... Uh, we named it Saving Fika, and it was me, my friend Jacob, and our bass player Nick. I was lead singing and doing drums because we had oh, we like, had no drummer, like Phil Collins shit. Oh, dude, I was in the air tonight, you know. Okay, yeah. You know? And what we, kind of music was it? It was like we, it was it was definitely a cover band. I mean, we wrote some songs, um, put some songs out under that name. Please don't look them up. Um, <laughs> Saving Fika, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we recorded everything in a basement, a basement bathroom closet. So it was tiny, you know, it was, but uh, it was like indie, indie rock. Okay. We loved that indie rock sound. So uh, did a lot of that. Nick moved off to college and Jacob has a twin brother. And he was like, I kind of want to learn drums. So I'm like, we're like, hell yes. Yeah. So we started teaching him drums. He got pretty good at drums pretty quick. So we're like, all right, Landon, move to bass. So I started playing bass, and we, you know, renamed it to Trip, T R Y P, and it was because it was like the third version of our band, because it was me and Jacob, then me, Jacob, and Nick, and then now it's me, Josh, and Nick, and oh, also has an exclamation point, you know, it's, okay, you know, trying yeah. to be different and shit, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of places to play. In McDonough at all, especially being like 16, 15. Yes, yeah, so you can't do anything. So, so, what's a gig for, for Trip? First one was first one was me at a coffee shop, and then I got Jacob on it, and it was called Queen Bee Coffee. And, dude, good coffee. Great coffee. We'd sell that place out. If you could sell out a coffee shop, we fucking sold Let's that go coffee sell shop. Sold out up. shows in high school. It was that's, it was cool. That's I mean, big. it was it was really cool. <laughs> but uh, the best one has to go to we. We had a gig lined up for Queen Bee, and this was with the Saving Fika time, you know? Okay. And, the old days. Oh, the old days. <laughs> the good old days. And uh, <laughs> we, it got canceled because there was a tornado in McDonough, and Queen Bee's right off the square, so we're pissed off, man. We've been practicing for a month, and we're driving. It's right off the square, so we, we're driving past the courthouse, and there was this brand-new parking garage that was built, and our bass player, Nick, was like, I bet we could do it in there. And I was like, yeah, that's funny and shit. And, you know, he's like, for real, let's go check it out. So we go in, see some, you know, plugins for everything and tested them out. We're like, they work. So it like, the gig was supposed to be at like eight o'clock, six o'clock at Queen B. We got everything together within an hour and told everybody, hey, parking garage, we're having this concert. We had 200 people show up during a tornado in McDonough. Like, swear. It, the acoustic's awful. We, we lit it up with Nick's Mustang. That's it was awesome. so much fun. 
so much fun. And it was so good that we did it a second time. Okay, you brought it to the parking garage. Even more people came. <laughs> and I remember the coolest person that had to be there. So Shaquille O'Neal lives in McDonough. He didn't come, but his son did. Oh, you had baby Shaq? Dude, we had we, Shakir. You had Shakir O'Neal. Shakir O'Neal. I remember he pulled up and I was like, <laughs> yeah, I got Shakir at my concert. No, no, no biggie, man. So who are some other notable people that are in the, Mc, in the, in the McDonough area? The so only it's, like... It's you, Shaq, Shakir. <laughs> Shakir. <laughs> the only other person like that really came out of McDonough, if you heard of the 90s band Collective Soul. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. They, uh, Will, Will and Bill Turpin. Will was, I think, the bass player for it. He went to high school with my mom. But Bill Turpin, his father, played at our church. Oh, so wow. he, he like got my first guitar it was my dad's and he picked it out for him and shit so i like to say you know yeah collective soul found me my first guitar you know <laughs> dude well that's that's the thing about coming from georgia and i've said it before with other georgia folks that we've had on here like we had we've had meg maroney we've had logan cross we've had dylan marlow there's something in the water within georgia and there has been for forever like oh, yeah. you can't talk about the the history of music in the united states of america particularly within country and rock without talking about the, the great state of Georgia. Oh, like, yeah, we got the Almond Brothers and uh, damn Zach Brown band. You got Zach Brown. I mean, just states Statesboro alone, which we'll get in. We'll we'll get in. We're, we're gonna oh, dive yeah. in on on the Blue Room and God's <laughs> country, as our friends like to call it. Matt McElwain <laughs> has been there plenty of times. We love Statesboro, Georgia, one of our favorite places to go on tour. Um, but even like just that that South Georgia scene of. Of you look at the lineage of of guys like Luke Bryan, then yeah. bringing up guys like Cole Swindell, and now guys like yourself, guys like Dylan Marlowe, guys like Trey Landing, guys like Brian Fuller that are coming out of the the South Georgia that that little triangle that is Valdosta to Tifton to Statesboro, and then stretching over to Savannah, and there's just so much so much talent. All you motherfuckers can sing, it's weird, and y'all love to do it, and the kids in the crowd love it. They like, love it. Like, there's just such a great built-in audience of music where people just love, whether it's country, whether it's rock, whether it's a DJ, whether it's pop punk, whatever the fuck it is, kids just go bananas in South Georgia. It's it's crazy. Even, like, rap came out of it. A lot of rap oh, came yeah. out of Atlanta. So it's just like, yeah. Georgia doesn't get a... It's it's not noticed as much as I think it would be. For yeah, it's noticed up here in Nashville because oh, if yeah. you go if you go to Red Door, which I know you're a little too young for Red Door, we'll get you there. We're <laughs> gonna throw you a big 21st birthday, by the way, because I know I you'll be wait. up here by then. Cam, we're gonna do that. We're gonna throw <laughs> we're gonna throw Mr. Landon here a big 21st birthday party. Um, but uh, you go to Red Door, and it's like you could talk to like ten different pe ten different guys or girls that are in there, and at least one or two of them will be from Georgia. Oh shit! Like that's just how how it is. And when I came down here from New York, I was like, "Damn, there's a lot of Georgia here." And lately, I've been or in the past few years, I've been working with a lot of artists from Alabama, just over the border. But um, but yeah, dude, like coming coming out of Georgia, there's. You, you've got like kind of kind of spoiled with all kinds of musical influences. Oh yeah, that are that are in there. So for you, what were you obviously collective soul? But what were you jamming to? Like what was what was Young Landon like jamming to growing up? So this is funny as hell, honestly. So since all this shit happened in January, meetings out of the ass with just all these people, whether it be labels or uh, uh, agents, all all those yeah, people. that and you that never that thought would never ever right? happen. And so they would ask me those questions, those same questions, like, who are your inspirations? And at first, it was just kind of like, off the top of my head, who am I going to name? And then finally, kind of got used to it. So I was like, I got to get something down. And I kind of figured it out. I remember, like, when I started playing guitar, it was, like, five bands, really. It was, it was my dad's radio station that really got me, right? Uh, what, would, what was the radio station? Plug them. I, I, I can't remember the radio station. It was just like his car radio. Just like just rock? Re it was Eric Church. Okay. He played... I, I can word for word sing the whole album to Mr. Misunderstood. Uh, a lot of Zach Brown and Train. Those I've seen, except Eric Church, those two live like at least three times or more. Okay. But for me, it was the Lumineers and Mumford and Sons. Okay. Because it was the acoustic guitar was really out there in all their songs. Yeah. And I didn't have an electric guitar. So I was like, I dig these guys, man. I dig them. And they're just singing, you know, just, you know, Mumford and Sons singing about England and with that British accent. So I would like fake a British accent sometimes. <laughs> I would sing, you know, when I was like seven yeah. or not seven, whatever age I was. But. Definitely Mumford and & Sons and uh, Lumineers took the cake. Yeah, and those are storytellers. 
Oh, yeah. And that's something that you do, like, the fact that you're 19 and singing about the shit that you're singing about and writing the songs that you're writing. And there's kind of this movement right now, and I've talked about it on here. You've, you watch the show. You, you know, like, probably what I'm about to say. There's, yeah. there's a movement of this, this guys, particularly guys, girls too, but singing about real shit in country music and it's a lot of folks that are 25 and under and you're kind of at the, the 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 younger side of that but it's just i don't know if it if it was covid i don't know if it was the the era before but it just seems like everybody's really everybody's sad everybody's singing oh, about yeah real shit i don't know if that's if that's the zach the zach bryan train that's pushing that or what it is but like why do you why do you think all you all you kids are singing about sad shit is it what we've been dealing with the past three four years in this in this country is it like is it just the like what is it honestly i think it's just got to be like all all this music is coming from the realest people yeah you know like i mean just the absolute realist so it's just kind of <coughs> what they're feeling at the time and i guess a lot of people just get with that you know they just understand what they're where they're coming from but uh covid definitely had to put a dent in there you know uh, yeah because covid you're you're 16 years old yeah I was, during during covid that's when that's when kids are starting to learn how to drive that's when you're having your golden era of high school you're you're the big man on campus the junior getting ready for dreaming of your of your senior year like experiencing those high school parties experiencing that life and like being 16 at that time, like that shit's taken away from you. It was. I mean, totally. It was weird. I remember being at uh, the, my job, Shane's Rib Shack. Shout out Shane's Rib Shack. Been there for like three and a half years. Good <laughs> but, barbecue. Uh, pretty damn good barbecue. Okay, good. When I cook it, you know. <laughs> yeah, you cook it, yes. Best barbecue you ever had, McElwain. Best damn barbecue right. you ever had. Um, and I remember coming, I was, I was working from Friday and, uh, on a Friday and my English teacher comes in and he goes, yeah, you hear about this COVID We're We're off on two weeks vacation. I was like, hell yeah, let's roll. That two weeks turned into like a year, year and a half. And I was like, damn, this is the longest two weeks I've ever had off of school. But, uh, no dude, like that's, I was writing way before that. Um, but that's when I would just get bored and just started writing. I remember like a lot of my songs, I, I remember I wrote one song, uh, during math class like 15 it took me 15 minutes i was just in math class and i was like man screw this teacher <laughs> and i was like <laughs> muted my computer and was just started writing had my guitar in the kitchen yeah because you learned over the computer oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> it's, see, it's a miracle see, i didn't have that they just started giving us <laughs> laptops when i was in school like because i graduated you graduated high school what year then you're 19 no 2022 so you're fresh out of high school yeah i just finished my freshman year in, uh, it's college. fucking wild. <laughs> so I graduated high school 2013, so the world was like a different, became a different place. Like, oh yeah, in that in between time span, dude. Like a lot happens in in nine years. It, I, damn right. <laughs> and that, that nine years was insane. I, I, it, it I don't want to say it's a blessing, but like, uh, you know, being in COVID for a long time, coming out like out of the door senior year, we're finally back in school. Dude, senior year freaking awesome i bet it was crazy i bet it was, it was so cool so much fun <laughs> i bet I, I bet it was wild i mean i look back at the last six months of 2020 were some of the best six months of my life they personally just, they were just fun man <laughs> it was fun when you when you when you got to really i think people got to figure out who they really were oh yeah and you're doing that as a teenager that's just natural to be like you're you're figuring yourself out going off to college doing all that shit but in general i think people when they had that time to catch their breath and kind of kind of think a little bit and that that isolation what was what was quarantine like like for you were you still was the rib shack because george because i we i got to go to a, a lot my first time in statesboro was december of 2020 and it okay. was full go really it was full go it was the week that the dick down came out for trey and it was full it was my first time in statesboro and <laughs> it was it was asses to elbows and crazy and wild like what was what was mcdonough like during like did you was the rib shack was the rib shack open for a little bit of close down just just to get everything figured out like every other business i would assume and uh we opened just like we weren't open on the inside, so it was like to go only. So we'd be carrying out food, so it was just only to go. So I, I'd, I'd work all the time. Okay, so you were working a lot. Oh, I love to work. 
Yeah. I love it. It keeps my mind of things, and I write all the time when I'm working. That's when I'm like going nuts, dude. I have a whole page in my phone of notes, just like at least 85% is just from work. Just little lyrics I come up with, yeah. and I just. Yeah. Have you started co writing yet? I have not. The only person I've co write is with Cam. Really? That's it. That's cool. Now talk about talk about Cam real quick. And I know she's sitting right over there and <laughs> you're you're very lucky to have her in your corner because it's, it's it's very important to have somebody going through this process of meetings and this buzz and all this stuff to that can help out help you out with that. And the fact that it's it's a hometown friend that you grew up with, I'm assuming, yeah. right? How like how far back do you and Cam go? So me and Cam I'm going to go really back. Yeah, go she's going to hate me for it. But um, <laughs> I remember the first time I ever met Cameron, not really met, just saw Cameron. Fourth grade, it was English class. We were re reading a book, and she came in to get checked out for whatever reason. And I remember looking at her and going, dang, that chick's tall. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and fifth grade ha came, and me and her and my friend Holly just kind of like, came together and uh, we became really good friends, went all through middle school and I left after eighth grade. So uh, high school started, went to public school. After a while, she went to public school and she's always been like, back then it was, I was doing those coffee shop gigs. She was always like on my ass, like about like just, I'm coming to the coffee shop, I'm bringing my family, I'm bringing my friends and I was like, why is this girl so obsessed with my music? Like, I mean, we're best friends and I'm so glad she, I, mean, I was just like, why? And, um, I remember it was senior year after, uh, I think it was a Tuesday. I don't know, but it was, I, I get home from school and doing my thing. You know, I get off on work-based learning. So I'm home at like 12, didn't have to work that day. So I was just playing guitar, writing Cameron calls me and she goes, Hey, and I was like, Hey, and she goes, I got a really important question to ask you. I was like, yeah, shoot. And she's like, uh, how serious about your music? And I was like, I'm, I, I love it. I'm, I love this shit. I'm pretty serious about it. She goes, well, do you want to do it for a job? And I was like, if I could, that would be insane. Like, yeah. I would love to do that. She goes, cool, because uh, I got accepted into Belmont, which is, you know, up there in the top music schools. And I was like, hell yeah. She goes, let's start doing this shit together. So we started, you know, like hanging out, uh, writing and whatnot, and... We, we, we assumed it would come eventually nowhere near as fast as it did really. Yeah. Cause it was just out of the blue, man. Yeah. It's, when, when did you start realizing things were changing? And obviously, um, if you want me tonight is the big, the big one. Yeah. That's, and the, the lyrics in that song too. I mean, you got to. I guess start with start with that song because the way you intro it, which we're honored to have popped your your na your Nashville your Nashville cherry like we that's something that we pride ourselves with oh and I mean that and I mean that for real like we we one of the things we pride ourselves with at Raised Rowdy is finding folks on their on their way up that that we believe in that sometimes aren't even in town and being like hey everybody at Live Oak check this kid out hell yeah and that um. And that, that first night that you played, it was like, holy fuck. And then the second time, it's like, oh, shit, there's Luke Combs' agent. There's, <laughs> there's Parker McCollum's agent. There's all these people from this agency. There's all these people from this label. There's this A&R guy. Holy shit, they're all here. We normally don't see them unless we're doing a takeover with XYZ agency. And I would go up and ask them, like, hey, so what are you, what are you doing here tonight? Or usually they would let us know that they were coming and, yeah. like, ask for a table reservation. But they they just they just showed up and like oh we're here to see Landon. I'm like no fucking way. That's awesome. <laughs> so it's it's really cool to have gotten to see the buzz and all of this stuff like transpiring and watching your life change and you're you taking trips up here like now multiple times within a week. So like when did when did that moment where you're like oh shit this is people people know who I am and. Was it a TikTok thing for you? Or like, it, where did it kind of it start? It was. So, like, I remember vividly. It was a Christmas break when I started writing the song. And I wrote it. It was a piano song. Okay. So you play it. How many, how many freaking instruments do you play? Like, you've, I mean, said dr you've, you've said dr – uh, you were talking about – I was like, yeah, he could rip on a guitar. I've seen that. Then you talk about how you were the drummer back in the day. <laughs> and now you're talking you – wrote, you, wrote you wrote the hit on the piano. Yeah, it was a piano. Well, I play, uh, like, guitar, bass – 
terrible banjo, terrible mandolin, terrible harmonica. But like, uh, when you say terrible, you mean better than the average bear. Terrib- yeah, what's Nash- your guitar? Nashville you like, musician get- terrible is way better than me picking up something. <laughs> I can't even do smoke on the water. McElwain's <laughs> tried to teach me a bunch, but I can't. I can't even pick a pick out a pick out a G string or an A or whatever. Like I can't do any of that shit. It, it was a thing. Like every Christmas after I started really getting into guitar, I would just get a new instrument. Like that's what I would ask for. I would just be like. All right, first I want an electric guitar. Next I want a ukulele. Now I want a banjo. Now I want a bass. Now That's I want this, smart. You know, piano and whatnot. So I, 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 can, I, can, I can get my way around some music stuff uh, as long as it got strings on it. You know, I'm not good at horns or anything. But yeah. uh, it, it, it started on piano, and I wrote half the song. It was just until the end of the chorus, that first chorus. And still on a Christmas break, Cameron says, hey, come over. Let's shoot some TikToks. It's like, bet she's got a kick out space. Smart, smart manager to have in your corner. Oh, yeah. Very smart. I didn't even know about t- Like, I didn't really even get TikTok until then. She yeah. was like, this is what we're going to need to do, and this is going to help us. And I was like, all right, whatever. Let's do it. And so go over to her house, and what well, was really to go over there and write. Writer's block like nobody's business. I mean, we couldn't get a line out of us. It was awful. And I was like, well, been here three, four hours I have half of this song. It's 11 o'clock at night. I was like, let's just record a TikTok, post it. So we have something done, right? And posted it, recorded it. Just half the song was written. And by the time I walked out of her house, it was already at like a thousand likes. And I was like, Cameron, what the hell is going on? And for those, like, for a minute, it was just refreshing. It was just a thousand views, refreshing, a thousand views. And that's when we were like, oh, sick and we were thinking wow a hundred thousand views that's kick ass and then it's now up to like 600 but that's when it kind of started changing because all these people were contacting me on instagram and whatnot um either trying to write some small labels come in and just like all over a tiktok and i was like fuck dude i gotta finish this song (laughs) (laughs) yeah i was like this song's not even done so I wrote the rest of the song and uh, a lot of it's like a, you know, hometown shit. That's really just it's kind of a hometown song to me. Just some experiences there. And we expected it to do, I mean, okay, nowhere near what we did when we actually released the song. And yeah, now I'm fucking here. It's just like all this over a song that I wrote on piano and yeah. wrote half of it one time. That, so. that started getting buzzed before it was even done. Yeah. It was, I, I never expected to do better than TikTok, but yeah. And now you're even, you're even getting playlisting on the, on the shit you put out this past week. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> Holy crap, man. And we were, Cameron sent me a picture. She was like, you're on this. And I was like, I was at work too. Yeah, and I we, was like, yeah, we we put you on the you're on the cover of the Raise Rowdy New Country playlist Hell right now. Yeah. So you're on, which isn't isn't nearly the the other big Spotify playlist, but it's something. No, that's it's that's something. Fucking, I like yeah. that, dude. That's awesome, man. Yeah, like when and then when did um when were like because I've that that whole scene is of the the sad boy kind mm. of thing right now. That's 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 getting getting pumped out there, like. When did that, because there's, the, the Zach Bryan fans are wild oh, on the yeah. internet, and I'm sure a lot of them probably get drawn. You pop up in algorithms of folks that listen to oh, yeah. Zach Bryan, listen Good to Wyatt and Flores. Ways, but yeah. yeah, listen to all, yeah, so like, what were, the, what were like the comments like, and then people being from all over the place, like? There were good ones, and there was bad ones, man. They were like, man, you're copying Zach's flow, and I thought it was the funniest shit, though. <laughs> like, some of those comments, man, I would read them, and I'm like, this is fucking hysterical yeah because you're just trying to write a song i was just like man i'm doing this for fun like my favorite one was uh from boston i was like that is fucking hysterical man that is awesome and uh something in the blue that was another good one but uh (laughs) you know there and but once you started getting those comments of people like not liking your music i knew i was something i was doing something right yeah i was like if everybody's liking my shit that something's wrong there because even the biggest bands in the world get hate. So yeah. I'm like, I finally got some hate. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. And so I kind of owned up to it. I was like, this is sick. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But uh, yeah, definitely got put in that Oklahoma mid 
Midwest area. And you're like, I'm just a kid from Georgia. Yeah, I was like, dude, I was just bored one day <laughs> after school, and I was just, or uh, yeah, after on Christmas break, just playing piano. Yeah, but I think that. that's that's a sound that's popping up within country music, oh, yeah. and it's not copying any certain thing. I think it's just a sound that people are are feeling when they're creating right now because Such you've got you've got the the boys from Oklahoma who do it turns out they do roll their joints all right um we've been out to <laughs> Oklahoma plenty of times uh but like you have like Zach and Wyatt and and folks like that but then you the where I know it's like a nationwide thing is because my homie from back home who's now down here Aiden Canfield yeah, yeah, yeah. has a similar that similar kind of vibe with, with his music and he's from 20 minutes not even outside of New York City and then seeing what you're doing out of out of South Georgia, like it's not just this this copycat thing. Like it's it's a thing that people are are feeling coming out of the the dark one of the darkest times in world history. Yeah, like, it's, it, I I feel like it's like the new uh, James Taylor and Van Morrison kind of moving in. You know that acoustic yeah. like sadder. Yeah, yeah I like shit. to I like to equate it as that it's like post bro country. Oh it's, yeah. it's the it's it's post sex drugs and rock and roll. It's post. FGL, nothing wrong with that. I mean, I saw Luke Bryan at the festival this past weekend, and it was cool to get to watch watch him up at up at country concert because I'm like, this is the guy that taught FGL and Cole Swindell and those guys the ropes, who and he learned it from Tim McGraw and Kenny Chesney and those guys, and it's just getting like passed down. But this thing is completely different. It's from so that. weird. I, I, I it's got to go to COVID because we were just bored as hell, and some of us had guitars in our room, and we we're like. I guess I'm going to learn it. Because that's when I started seeing like a lot of musicians coming out, you know? Yes. Yeah. I, I, before COVID, it was not as many. But now people just get bored and started learning shit. Yeah. And you don't even, and radio is still an important thing. But like you don't even, you can reach millions and millions of people from all over the world by taking a 30 second, even a 15 second video on your phone. It's insane. It's crazy. The reach, the reach that that you guys and girls have now coming up is incredible. And it's the, the best time for it all for it all to happen and everything. Now we got to talk about God's country a little bit. <laughs> so Georgia Southern, what made you want to go there? So it's funny as hell. Because Georgia's got a lot of colleges. It does. A ton of colleges. It does. Not for me, I would assume, because I, I didn't have, I wasn't the greatest student back in high school. Yeah, where, 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 else, where else did you apply to? So my go-to was KSU because that's where my Kennesaw. band was going. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was where my band was going. So I was like full gun ho toward it, everything. Applied. We're sorry, but we can't accept you. You oh. know, I was like, oh. backup was uh, Georgia Southern because all my elementary and middle school friends went there. You know, who I party with, all my honestly country guys. You know, we all all the Jackson and Pike guys. They were like, we're all going down to Southern. So applied to Southern, and I spelt my name right on the you know acceptance <laughs> thing, and it was like, hey, you're breathing, dude. You got it. Yeah. So I was like, hell yeah. And I mean, I was a little bummed out. Um, but I didn't know how lucky I was going to get because Southern, the music scene down there is like no other. It's crazy. They love that shit. The frats, the sororities, the bars, they just, it's insane. Yeah. You can't talk about country music the last 20 years without talking about Statesboro, Georgia. It's nuts. And it's, and that's something I always tell people when I'm, when I'm going around the country and then people will ask, cause I've, I've done probably over 300, between three and 400 shows in the last four years between Muscadine, Bloodline, and Trey Lewis. And people always ask, where's, where are some of your favorite places to go? And I'm like, the, the, the southern college towns are just, they're just, they're just vibrant and they're, they're fun. But, but Statesboro, Georgia is just the, the blue room specifically. Oh, yeah. Shout out to William and Al and Bradley and Megan and everybody that make oh, the blue yeah. room possible. Um, Drake. And, Cody, Bryce. Yeah, have you had have you had some experiences there? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that was a. Have you played there yet? Yes, I've played there. I have a. I wouldn't say a headline quite yet. I did opening for the Stews. I did a few uh, acoustic things there, out on the patio, out in the big room. Now, uh, I have my first headliner there, August seventeenth. Oh, so it's coming up. Oh yeah. I'm excited. August and it's 70th. full band now. I've had August had full 17th. Band. Where am I? August? I want to make sure I'm, I want to try and be there if I can be. I'm excited. It's, want, and it's no. silly week. Oh, it's, oh, oh no. Dude. Oh no. My, my mom is asking to come. I was like, you really don't want to come to this. <laughs> it's going to be elbow to elbow. August 17th. I'm, I'm going on. I will, I will unfortunately be, <laughs> be out of, be out of town already on commitments for that. But the blue room is, 
just an incredible and maybe maybe I have a, a really like positive taste because it was the first Dick Down in Dallas show that we did with Trey when really? things started changing. Yeah, it was the Damn. Dick Down in Dallas came out December first. We played the Blue Room December fourth. Damn. Yeah. It was Damn. three days because it was booked as a cover gig because Trey and the guys McElwain used to was now he's on the he's on the crew side, but he used to be Trey's drummer. And they used to play it once every month or two as a cover gig. And they were one of the cover bands that would just go through there. Damn. So it was booked. They had um they had the Blue Room and Saddlebags booked. Or not Saddlebags, um, Barrel House South. They had Barrel House in, in um, Savannah and the Blue Room booked as cover gigs. The normal, their normal cover gigs. But then that, that quickly, it, it was a 90-minute it it min- set. Yeah, it was a, it was a <laughs> 90-minute like, full band kind of thing. But do you have, like, you, you did a gig recently, right? Another full band? Like, you've done some gigs since all this stuff has happened, right? I've done a few gigs, yeah, definitely in Statesboro. I've yet to do a full band gig. I haven't played this'll, full band. This will be your first full band gig in since States- since high school. Since that, fuck, I want to be there. I got a beach trip planned with my girlfriend. No, I cannot good, miss. I cannot miss. I will be. Done. I will be in Destin, Florida. But I cannot wait to see the content from that. Now, have you have as as it come up about doing some other shows in different college markets and stuff yet? Oh yeah, totally. So I played Smith's Old Bar. Not too long ago. Uh, and that was just acoustic? That was just acoustic. I had two opening acts. Uh, they're from Belmont. They're up here. They were kicking butt. Zoe and uh, True. Awesome. And, uh, I mean, it was a 100-cap room, and we were a little worried. Uh, we sold, like, I don't know, 60-ish tickets right before the gig started. And, uh, yeah, five minutes, five minutes after the first opener, it sold out. And so I was like, dude, this is pretty sick. And I mean, it was, it was a lot of my friends, a lot of my family. I didn't care, man. That was so cool. I had my first ever ticketed show sold out. It was, it was awesome. But uh, definitely have some planned up. I'm, uh, speaking of the guys, uh, Peachtree and whatnot. Uh, yeah. Bradley's got me on uh, going on a little tour with uh, Gavin Adcock. Really? Yeah, I'm playing like six or f- five or six shows with him. Who's another another um, Statesboro kid, boy. another Statesboro kid? Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's a fucking scene down there that's unmatched. It's insane. It, it, it what I figured out is I I went down there and I was, just, you know, listening to all these people at the bar, and I was like, okay, I mean, you hear the all these cover bands come, and I'm like, okay, you hear? I've heard that song seven times. So I was like, what's gonna do something different? You know, what's what's gonna be different? So I kind of like steered away from the bro country side and started playing all this acoustic Zach Childers, Coulter, all that yeah. shit. And I knew that's what they wanted and it 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 just grabbed them, dude. It was awesome. It yeah, was awesome. where do you know where where you're going on that tour with Gavin? I know I'm going I would assume it's Peach Dreams. You're probably doing Birmingham, Milledgeville. The one I can't go on is Birmingham. It's oh. right after the Statesboro gig. Okay. So I was like, I can't do that. Yeah. Um but the day after that, I think it's Old Miss. Oh, sick. I know we're going to Clemson, Milledgeville, Athens, and Tifton. Are oh, you doing, you're doing um, Terminal South? Is that Tifton? That's Tifton. I've never been. You've never been to Tifton? I probably drove through there. Okay. So <laughs> Tifton is like Statesboro. Tifton, Valdosta, <laughs> and Statesboro are very similar. But when you think about the schools, like, and you know about the Georgia colleges from, oh, yeah. from I've, being I've a Georgia a, kid. A lot of frats at Georgia College. Yeah, played, played. Well, I'm saying like the different colleges within Georgia. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, so Tifton is AVAC. Tifton's so, AVAC. Tifton, okay, Tifton is the the trade school. Yeah. So that's all the kids. The that are, those are the kids. Those are your diesel mechanics. Hell those yeah. are your your kids. Those are your kids learning studying HVAC. Those are your plumbers. Those are your your kids that are in the trades. They're blue collar. They like to drink. They like to have a good time. And they fucking love country music. Oh, I can't and wait. that that room that room there in. Um, that room there in Tifton is a lot of fun. We've had good memories in there too. It's there's not a, there's not a whole it's, there's something about those towns where there's not a whole lot to do. That when something's happening, whether it's an up and comer like yourself or it's somebody like a, like a Cole Swindell or somebody bigger, the, the crowd's going to be there. There's a built in crowd that's just awesome. So you're going to have a blast, bro. I'm very excited I can't for wait. you. And these are these are full band. These are acoustic. I'm just doing opening acoustic. But okay, but it seems like you've done that a lot so oh, yeah. you have I no love, problem i love my acoustic okay show. what are, what are the covers that you mix into your set so like 30 30 minute acoustic opener gig what what covers do you mix in there i'll be honest dude i usually pick <laughs> i pick my sets probably like 
the day of the game. But like what historically, like what's been like uh I love uh Bury Me in Dixie by Riley Glenn. Hell yeah. That I goes that'll go over that. very well in Tifton. I love that. You'll win some brownie points right off the bat. Hell yeah. Poncho and Lefty. Okay. Throwbacks. That's definitely one. I'm trying to think of some more. Definitely got a lot of ZB and a lot of uh childers in there. Cause that's just I mean that yeah, know, they're always gonna hit home. Yeah. Uh God, off the top of well, my I mean, head. You, and you've got so many originals. You've been writing songs for so long. Uh, I got like four books. And you've only, and you've only got three out right now. Yeah. Which, Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters? I do acoustic Foo Fighters. Which one do you do? Uh, my Hero and Everlong. Oh, fuck yeah. Those things hit. Dude. And the crowds just sing them right back. It's, it's awesome when there's parents in there because the parents <laughs> really know. Also, Take On Me by AHA. Oh. Dude, you do that acoustic? The moms <laughs> dig it, dude. I yeah. feel like Young Gravy up there. I yeah. swear. <laughs> You know, all the moms just kind of turn their head and they're all like, take on me. Yeah, this, like, this, this young kid gets it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is it, is it wild to think you're doing all that you're doing right now at 19, freshman in college? It's, it's insane. Or now sophomore. Yeah, in it's, it's insane. Me and Cameron talk about it all the time. We're like, what the hell are we doing, man? We're yeah. Like, genuinely, we didn't think it was going to happen this quick at all. And now we're traveling. This is my fourth fifth time up in Nashville and it's I've only been it's been the summer so I, I started coming to Nashville in the summer and second time this the past six days I've came so yeah yeah so what when has it crossed the mind of getting up here definitely eventually I a hundred percent I do want to stay in Statesboro one more I'm going to stay in Statesboro one more year because well, it's I, well, I, well that's the thing too is everybody's and I've, I've, I'm obviously a big advocate for Nashville, but I come from New York. We don't have a lot of the country scene up there. It does exist, and I was a big part of it up there. But you've got so many, so many ponds to be a big fish in, and oh, yeah. so many gigs that are down there to where you can, you can do that. And the fact that it's you're just coming up here from from McDonough from from Statesboro, like those are, those are, it's not that far of a drop. Like it's not that bad. No. And the fact that you can, you can learn and continue to grow yourself as a performer, as an entertainer and build your bases to when you are doing those shows at the Buckhead Theater, to where you are doing those shows at Iron City, Birmingham, to where you're, you're playing these, when you're, when you're headlining a sold out outdoor blue room show, like, cause that shit's going to happen. It's going to get there. But when those moments come, you have all these fucking reps. You're what you're doing down there is no different than what the guys and girls are doing on Broadway. Those cover gigs that you've been playing since you were you were you were fronting or I guess backing and fronting playing <laughs> drums and singing in in those bands and those coffee house gigs, that's no different than what guys and girls move here to do because they don't have a scene where they come from. Oh yeah. Like you've got such an opportunity being down there to grow and there there are big players down in Georgia like the Peachtree guys, like, oh, yeah. like Sonny over at Terminal South, like all these different rooms that are down there that where you're, you're able to get the opportunities without having to move up here and pay an absurd amount for rent, <laughs> you know, cause that's something that you'll see is like Nashville is a lot more expensive than small town, Georgia. Definitely noticed that y'all's beer costs $9. Yeah. It's, it's fucking insane. ridiculous. It's, insane. it's, it's nuts, you know, which back home in New York, it costs like $13. It's, a little, it's even more up there, <laughs> but like you get to, you, you've got like, I don't think there's like a huge rush for you to even get up here. Because you're you, you're able to take these trips and you've got your your biggest advocate in your right hand up here she's already and up here. one of the best institutions to learn and where she's able to network and help out with be with being that the teams in Nashville you know like totally lucky for that because states where's a kickoff place then Nashville and then yeah. the team separated but separated in the best way yeah you know it's not like she went to. I don't know Montana for school. Yeah, yeah imagine. I mean, I'm sure she'd have fun out there, but uh, Montana's Montana's <laughs> Montana's great. So, what do you do when you're not doing music? Like, what is what is Landon Smith like doing when he's when he's not writing a song or taking or having a coffee meeting with so and so <laughs> or doing whatever? Like, what do you enjoy doing? I have noticed that up in Nashville, nobody gets like. I mean, some people get lunch and dinner. It's so much coffee. The first time we came up here, dude, I was so high off the caffeine, bro. I yeah. was like, after the fifth meeting of that day, I was. So oh, what's, your, yeah. what's your favorite coffee place in Nashville? Because you've been to a bunch of them by now. Oh, what is it? Portland Brew. Portland Brew? I okay. dig that place. Yeah. It's just vibey, you know? It's, it's chill. And I mean, I don't like specialty. I, I take my black 
black coffee. Okay. Right. That's all I drink. I don't like sweet shit. So, but uh, yeah, I've noticed everybody just gets coffee. So I was like hyped after the <laughs> fifth meeting yeah. of that first time. Uh, yeah, well, what do you What do you do for like what when you're not doing music? What do you do to like What's your release? What's your break from all this? The world that's spinning around you, which it's spinning faster and faster yeah. by the day. What, what do you do? What do you do for like your release? Like you're a big sports guy. Like what do you what do you like to pay attention to and do? I mean, honestly, it never stops with the music in a good way. Like I love to work. Like I said, like this summer has been work and music. I if I'm not up here doing something or playing a gig, there's nine out of ten chance I'm at the shack cooking up some ribs, pork, you know, all that stuff. I, it just helps my mind focus and uh, that. And I also love to party, you know. Makes okay, it my, yeah. It, it's, it, it's the stuff I write about. So I kind of like everything I do is just something I can write about, whether that be just partying in a field somewhere, partying on a lake somewhere, just hanging out with the boys by a fire. Uh, I, I guess I can kind of get into sports. I was the uh, – I was uh, – my senior superlative was uh, most school spirited. I was the oh, head of the student section. Okay. Yeah. And I learned what a pick six in football was this my senior year when I was head of the student section. I was like, somebody said pick six, and I was yeah. like, what? In the what were hell what were the, what were the student section chants? Because we had some. I played because like I played football in high school and like I was involved in the sports stuff on like the media side. Like I wanted to be on ESPN originally. That's what I wanted to do was be on doing this, but with with sports as opposed yeah. to music, and then transition into this stuff. What was the um, was it McDonough? Was it McDonough High School? Was it was that, uh, Union Grove. Union Grove. So yeah. what is the Union Grove, and what makes you guys the best student section of 2022? Well, honestly, I think it it helped that I was rowdy and obnoxious and kind of didn't play by the rules on the student I, I, section. I, I, rela I relate to that. I relate <laughs> yeah. to that. High five. High five. Hell yeah. You can't just do what everybody Ray, else We're, we're rowdy. Ray's rowdy. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know. And, uh, like, I can't remember the chance off the top of my head, but there was this one thing where we do the roller coaster. So I would go on the field, and I would just put my hands up, and we'd just act like we were going up a roller coaster, and then go down and do all this <laughs> shit. And so the whole student section would do that. And we got... Like it was an, it was like a key part in every single game. Like I would have to do that. It, it you know, sometimes I grabbed some pom poms from some cheerleaders. Ooh, Dude, okay, going, good hey. move, good move. I think the best one was uh, against Ola. We played, and it was like that's like, dude, that's like Auburn, Alabama. It's like it's an intense game, you know, um, and so tensions were hot, man. Like they. You didn't go to the Ola side, and Ola didn't come to the yeah. you know, the guest side. So the flag runners, you know, when you'd have all the flag, you know, when we'd yep. get a touchdown and whatnot, dude, I grabbed a flag, and I ran over to the Ola side. I was getting spit on by the band, cussed out by the <laughs> – dude, that principal, I came back to our side, he started chewing me out. You ever do that again, you're going to be banned from the premises – our principal got in it, and they were they were, they were laughing their ass off. We ended up winning the game. It was like, oh, dude, that was that was best football game I've ever been to. Hell yeah! It was so much fun. So I guess that's my sports side of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Well, I definitely see like, and that's that's what's interesting is like the music that you write. It's about it's about things that you experience in life and all that. But there's like when you're who you are like. Your personality off the mic and your personality on the mic seem to be seem to be a little bit different. Oh yeah, like the rambunctious, like like <laughs> rowdy, like because you're you're just a bottle of energy, bro. And I love that. I, I am to too. Be, you know? I am too. I'm the same fucking way. Like, are you were you were you an ADHD kid? Oh yeah, 100%. I was too. Were you on medicine? Yes. Which one? Which ones? I can't remember. I don't know. It was like smoking like a true ADHD kid. I, I can't, <laughs> dude. I can't remember. It was just my pill, pill bottle, and it said yeah, Landon Smith. I was like, bet. Yeah, because I, I was a, Dunza. I was a, I was a concerta, <laughs> concerta kid. Concerta. Concerta, which is like Adderall, which, by the way, right now you, it's very hard to get a prescription for. There oh, you're an, telling me. There's an Adderall shortage in this country. And yeah. it is a real problem that we hope they will fix. I, I had like three doctor's appointments that I have to go to to try to get it prescribed bro, again. Bro, yeah, same. It's I'm like, oh, guys. Same. Did you? When did you start taking taking your meds and stuff? Do you remember? Like, I, don't I took them young. I didn't take them young. I took them like high school a year or two ago. Yeah. Oh, really? So you just got on them? Yeah. Okay. See, I was like, 
I was one of those kids where I was I was rambunctious and I was definitely like the, the attention deficit for sure. Like I wouldn't be a short term memory. Like I'm, <laughs> it's like it's like squirrel. Da, 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 da. Um, but the the impul the impulsive thing, which I would be the guy that would that would get the flag and go running around. Like that's that's a move that I would do as well. I never did that. I was, I was on I was doing I was I was on the field, particularly on the sideline. I didn't play much, but. Um, but that that impulsive thing, like I relate to that a lot. So I was on, I was on like three or four different ones, and they rotated when I was a kid to figure out what the right one was. And it ended up being fifty four milligrams Jesus of this concerta. Holy stuff. crap! Yeah, dude. I was he- I was on the heavy shit. Damn. Like I was I was on that stuff for a while, but I I definitely like relate to like your personality and shit. Like I feel I feel that with that seems like myself with like Nikki T with a lot of the folks that I keep, I keep around me are, are that like minded thing. So have you like started like meeting folks here in Nashville, like other writers and, and artists and started like connecting with people yet? Like kind of finding your crew or is it you're up here so quick and so back that you haven't even had the time to do that. And you're so young. It's tough to get into a bar when you're, 19 years old it's all about confidence it's all about confidence all about confidence if you act like you're (laughs) supposed to be there dude you'll be there you know what i'm saying but uh no definitely we've been meeting so many people and i haven't had a chance to do co-writes yet but uh i guess a really important part to me and cameron is our team since we're so close and whatnot it's like you know if we don't feel like those people are the right people sorry but no you you have to get to know these people and it's it's not going to be right off the bat, but uh, yeah. So definitely meeting so many people, and I've noticed all oh, y'all motherfuckers are so cool. <laughs> so Dude, cool. we get to, we get to do things that we love for for a living, and we work we work hard to get to it. We, Absolutely, I spent like you spend hours in the rib shack, um, which. I want to go to the Rib Shack now because I love. I fucks with some barbecue. I work at the original. The original. The original Shane's. There's, there's a difference. There's multiple of them. Oh, yeah. It's, a, it's like a chain. But it started all in McDonough. I'm, like, best friends with the owner's son. So, like, it's, that's how I got the so, job. So what, what's the place called? Shane's Rib Shack. Shane's Rib Shack. So why is Shane's, like... Because I've had, I've had Moe's Barbecue. I've had, I've had this barbecue. I've had Central and Rendezvous in, in, um, in Memphis and, like, had the different styles and stuff. What is it about Shane's? Well, honestly, especially I've been when you, Especially it. when you cook. Like, so you, when did you start working there? So I started, I remember I was like 16, week after, week after I turned 16, I wanted a job, so I worked at Subway for a little bit. Oh, then, shit. Okay. Oh, dude, I was a sandwich artist. Wait till, wait till you start touring, bro, like heavily. <laughs> you're going to spend a lot of time in Loves. At, we just when went you, to when you tour, today. You're going to, well, did it, have, did it have a Subway, a Hardee's, what did it have? McDonald's. Then McDonald's. Okay, that's a pretty good one. McDonald's, that's, it's good to, good to get the McGangbang on, you know, when you take, <laughs> take the, you ever have one of those? It's the Big Mac and the chicken. Well, it's the McDouble, McDouble and the McChicken because we're going on value here. You know, we can't. Aff- not all of us can afford Big Macs, so we got to make the McGangbang, the, the poor man's Big Mac. <laughs> That's what we used to call it in New York, at least. Um, McGangbang. <laughs> McGangbang. Oh yeah, I remember seeing the McQuadbang one time. My boy, my boy Cummings back home. He would get two of each and put them in together. He's also like six five, like two eighty five, like big motherfucker. But um, <laughs> you're you're going to experience a lot of Subway when you're on the road. Subway is just. Everywhere, and you're gonna get to the point where you're like, "Damn it, I'm hungry. I don't want Subway, but I'm gonna get Subway." <laughs> Subway. What was your What was your go to? Because you were eating a lot of Subway when you were working there. I'm oh sure. yeah. What was your go to sandwich, or did you have your own that you would make that wasn't on the menu, where you were like, "This shit's all good." I know for a fact teriyaki chicken, right? Okay, you're one of the teriyaki guys. I liked okay. I liked that shit, but I also everybody would come in and order this sweet onion sauce, and I was like, "That's fucking gross." So one day on my break, I just got it, and I was like. All right. I get it. Now. I get it. <laughs> and so if I go to Subway, you best believe I got like three sweet yeah. onions on the side. Yeah. I call, I get the, um, the Southwest Chipotle. That one's good. Uh, the Chipotle Ranch or whatever it is. Because we had a Subway at my college, like on campus. And that was back in my drinking days before sobriety when I used to walk <laughs> around with the flask in the boot. Um, and I was booze and heavy. And we had, um, Kyle and Tyrell at the subway, like in the student center, and I'd go in there all fucked up, and I'd be like, "Boys, make me a sandwich." Make me a sandwich. And they would just take all kinds of shit and just pop it on there, <laughs> and I would, I would get after it. But um, what's like the go-to? What's like your go-to at the? Is it ribs at the at Shane's? Yeah, or it's do like you get... ribs, chicken, and barbecue. So it's barbecue's pork, right? Yeah. Okay. So... I'm not a big like I've never been a big barbecue person, so like ribs, especially being around it all the time. Yeah. Like I just it has to be. Like some 
good barbecue, you know, like you go to like Clayton County and somebody's making it in their front yard. Like that's the good barbecue. Front, so I'm the front yard smokers. Oh yeah. oh yeah. That's that's the good barbecue. So I can't I can't just go to like Jim and Nick's. I can't go to Shane's and get barbecue, but uh it's still a good barbecue. But I I like sh- that's where I screw with stuff and I make my own concoction. You know, like uh, uh it's like the not the Texas the, the uh patty melts from Waffle House. Ooh. I can make some of those there, you know, put some onions and peppers in it. Okay. That's been my go to. That's been my go-to. Big for patty milk guy. That's what. I, that's my Waffle House move. I love patty. I love Waffle House. I like patty melts a lot. There's, there's so where's the? I'm trying to think. There's because there's some like greasy spots here in Nashville that are really good spots to get patty melts at. Have you had? Um, have you? I'm trying to think of like places that you like to recommend you to eat while you're up here. I'm sure Cam's got you. Got you in some good. Got you in some good spots for for oh, eats yeah. and stuff. She's like, got me into Jack Browns. I dig that place. Jack, I thought I was just gonna bring up Jack Browns is a cool fucking vibe. That's such a vibe. Those sweet potato fries. So good. So I love good. sweet potatoes. Yeah, I love sweet they're potatoes. they're fire. Um, have you been to any of the barbecue joints up here? No, like I, I genuinely don't go to barbecue joints. Oh, because you're around it all the time. I'm just time. around it all the time. I'm like, I'm just not in the mood for barbecue. How good is the local Mexican joint in McDonough? Because every southern town is a fucking Mexican joint. All right, this is it. There's, there's probably I don't know a few. If, there's really not. There's really? Like, a lot of them are chain. Like I don't want to say chains, but they're like, you go and it's like, yeah, okay, cool Mexican food. There's this one place called my guitar player in my uh, high school band put me on. Santos or something, it's a gas station Mexican. So it's oh, right next to it. Okay. Dude, no English spoken in there. Yep. Same. That sounds like the taco trucks in Antioch. We have a lot of those here in Nashville. It's, you go in there and I barely can read the menu and I just point and I'm just like, best Mexican food. Oh my God. It's yeah. so good. I like the green, green gus are like these, these talk. I forget what is, what's even in it. Nikki T turned me on to him. And, and when he was living, we were both living in Antioch. <laughs> Antioch's the spot where you, you question fireworks or gunshots. You know, you're like, you're like, you're like, it's a Tuesday in October. Nobody should be shooting off fireworks. Let's go inside guys. Like it's one of those, but there's, there's a late night, late night food truck down there off on uh, Nolensville Pike. And we, me and Nikki would, and our, we'd have, we'd, we'd have our, our high dia sessions if he catch my drift and we'd go up there and we'd grab, <laughs> we'd, we'd load up on some gringos and the Haritos, the, the sodas and whatever. And oh, yeah. Mexican food's fucking solid. So what do we got on tap for the rest of this year? Like with, with stuff, you've got some shows coming up. You've got, you just put out the, is it, is, it was listed as like a single, but you put out like two songs. Yeah, it was listed as a single, so, but it technically it's a double track. We had Taken Off the Tennessee and July 6th, which Cameron wrote damn near most of both of those songs. I helped with a lot, but uh, <laughs> I wrote the music. She wrote the lyrics. Put a little, put a little lines in there, but uh, hopefully I want to do a few more singles, EP, and then an album. Okay. That's what I got like in the mind, already engraved, you know, already got the ideas for everything, so... Hopefully putting that stuff out. Yeah. Uh, when you get to the point of touring, what are you going to have on your rider? Do you even know what a rider is? Not a clue. Okay. So a rider, and I'm sure they've taught Cam this at Belmont. Um, so a rider is what someone like Cameron would send out to the venue to be like, what, and what's called an advance email, which is something you'll, you'll get to. You, won't, you don't have that in the cover gigs usually. But it's like, hey, we're going to need this for this for power this is our stage plot like this is what the band looks like on stage guitar player here drummer here need a need a power box there whatever but then there's the hospitality rider and that's when you <laughs> ask for what you want a venue to give you so what would what would be on like <laughs> The Trey Lewis rider for years, even though Trey's completely stone cold sober, the band is the band and the crew are not. Um, they would get a, a big handle of Fireball, a case of Miller Lite. We'd get a can of can of dip for Trey. Like some people do, like gym passes. People do this, that. What would you? What would be like your dream? Like you show up to you show up to a venue and there's there's just stuff in the green room for you. What would you want on there? All right, so I have two boys that come with me everywhere. Okay, like you got a crew. Rivers. I okay. got I got my crew. You know. They're awesome, and it's Ryan and Jackson. I have to have Cheez-Its for Jackson because okay. he will fuck up a box of Cheez-Its within okay. 30 minutes. Big box of Cheez-Its? Oh, big box of Cheez-Its. Extra cheddar, you know, like yep. it's falling at your... Yep. Oh, so, yeah. You know, Finger looking good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Ryan's got to be the Pop-Tarts, man. He loves him some Pop-Tarts. Oh. The strawberry frosted ones? Yep. That's the ones. So I have to have that, that for them. If I happen to be 21... Uh, I would ask for a bottle of Jameson. Bottle of J- Jameson's your Jameson would be the go-to. I, I guess it would be. Okay, but uh, probably some finger sandwiches, man. I love sandwiches. 
Pickles and mustard. That's my go-to on sandwiches. I cannot wait till you get to New York one day. Because we have, you talk about sandwiches, like, that's what we do. I've heard the sandwiches are so good. That's what we do, bro, is we, we have Jewish delis and Italian delis, and it's just fucking, like, what, Subway's like the chain, it's like going to, it's like going to Jack Brown's, but then going to McDonald's, you know, like, yeah. Subway's like the McDonald's to the, to the, to the sandwich places back home that, like, McDonald's is to, like, Jack Brown's. So you can get, like, a pastrami sandwich that's, like, the size of your head, bro, Jesus. with the mustard on there, bro. I'm such a sandwich guy, so, man. Oh, dude, yeah, if you're a big sandwich them. guy, it's funny. Our boy Dawson Edwards from Rome, Georgia, who does our our um, our NASCAR podcast, the Race Ride Racing podcast. Yeah, I listen he, to them over here. Now. Yeah, yeah, he is um, He's a big sandwich guy. Like, for a while, when him and I first met during COVID, we would send back memes of sandwich, like different like sandwich accounts on Instagram. Like that was like a thing we would do. Be like, he'd be like, "Boy, look at this sandwich right here." And I'd be like, "Oh shit, that's a big sandwich," you she know? Thick, she thick. Yeah, dude. Um, there's um, I'm trying to think if there's like there's there was a spot in my in my college town back in Jersey. It was called Hoagie Haven. Hoagie Haven. Hoagie Haven. So Hoagie, you'll learn too. Different parts of the country call sandwiches different things. Like Wawa calls their sandwiches hoagies because that's like the Philly Jersey thing. You yeah. call them hoagies. In New York, we call them heroes. You know, not not like Spider Man or Superman, but they're they're the big. Heroes. Might as well be. They're it's like, like firehouse. The hero. Yeah, exactly. Like a hero. Exactly. All the chains, and then you have subs, and you have grinders, and you have this, and you have that, um, and you have all kinds of stuff. But Hoagie Haven used to do a their big their normal size sandwich was like an eighteen incher. 18 inch sandwich, bro. They had one that was called the Dirty Sanchez, bro. The Dirty Sanchez? The dirty fucking <laughs> Sanchez in Princeton, New Jersey at Hoagie Haven, dog. And it fucking, it had this magical sauce on it. They had fucking fries on there. They had cheesesteak, all this good shit, bro. That sounds like something Joey Diaz would eat. You know? Oh, dude, yeah, exactly. You, know, you go down to Jersey and you get the fucking, uh, the, 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 the Dirty Sanchez, oh, you know. You do good voices. I try. What are some other what are some other in person like some voices you can do? Can you do an Australian accent? Yeah, I can. What's it sound like? All right. I swear I gotta I gotta pretend for a second. So yeah, get, imagine get there's a tiger, up. right? There's a tiger. There's a right tiger there. over there, and I'm Steve Irwin, right? Gotta get in the mood. Get in the zone. All right. Welcome back. Right there. It's a female tiger. Prime mating season. I'm gonna poke it with a stick. Oh. You are gonna poke that shit. I'm gonna poke <laughs> I figured out also I can do like a, I feel like I can do a pretty damn good Heath Ledger Joker impression. Really? It's insane. But like, oh God, it's weird. What is it? I, well, I like weird. It's weird. Cause can I do like even the, you know how he like licks his lips and stuff? Yeah. What do you got? Okay. Let me, like, yeah. Drink some water. water. <laughs> Did you do like acting and shit? Were you like a theater kid? For one year. Cause I was going to say, you give me theater kid vibes in the best way possible. <laughs> in the best way. In the best way. <laughs> yeah. 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 Shout out to all the theater kids. Hell yeah. Um, no, I was I was in theater for like one time, but yeah, it's just it's the ADHD man. Yeah, just get bored. So what's Heath Ledger, Joker? Uh, R.I.P. Heath Ledger. Yeah, R.I.P. Best best actor. All right. Um, do you want to know how I got these scars? My father was a drinker. One night. He comes home a little crazier than usual. Comes at my mother with a kitchen knife. And he comes at me with a knife. He doesn't like that, not one bit. Puts the knife in my mouth. Why so serious? Bro. <laughs> Bro. It's weird, man. Dude. It's weird. No, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for the on the tour like vlog content that you guys are going to capture with fucking Landon. <laughs> we Dude. already have a Snapchat story called Nashville or Bust that my friend just films random shit that we're doing. Dude, <laughs> that's you have your content team already. Like you guys have it figured out. Dude, that's fucking awesome. I love that shit. That's awesome. It's weird. It's one of my weird talents, I guess. No, bro, that's fucking damn. I cannot do impersonations like that. Yeah, it's weird. It's, <laughs> it's also you, big movie guy. Then I'm assuming movie buff like crazy. So what, mo like what? Are, who's so Heath Ledger? Great Heath actor. Ledger's got to take it. He's he's amazing. But like one of my favorite Johnny Depp and Patrick Swayze. Oh, dude, I love that. I love you some Dirty Dancing. That's my favorite movie. Really, like, hands down, number one. You I can watch, watch yeah. that any day. You ever watch Trailer Park Boys? Do Give me back my fucking kitty, <laughs> dude. I love Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> 
Those that's, guys are awesome. Bro, they are. They are. <laughs> they're, they're, so my friend Jacob, he plays guitar for me. We're at uh, <laughs> didn't do, did whiskey jam last week, so we're talking to a million people, and we just we're talking to this lady, and somehow Trailer Park, she's Canadian. Okay, yeah. So I was like, she said she was Canadian. I was like, I love Trailer Park Boys. She goes, Well, I've managed Ricky Bubbles and Julian. Me and Jacob, we had uh, John Daly in that bar. He came yeah. like when I was playing. Who? Yeah. The, we got the manager of the damn Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> Lost our shit, dude. Yeah. I love that show. I do too, man. It is so funny. I even like the movies. The movies the are movies so of Trailer Park. I watched that. One of the weirdest jobs that I ever worked before moving down here. It was when I was in like the summers in between college. So my Shane's Rib Shack was <laughs> working for the town parks and recs department as like one of the guys that would like pick up the trash and like cut the grass and shit. And we would sit when it would rain. We'd be able to sit on our phones and watch like Netflix. I binged that some that summer summer of 2014. I binged the fucking Trailer Park Boys. Like I watched it that entire summer. I watched the whole fucking series it's so it was good awesome. there's not a bad one no there's not are you a letter kenny guy too letter kenny's dry it's I, different i i've watched a few letter kenny's like <laughs> those guys are funny but i can barely understand them yeah you know jared kiso's uh they, <laughs> squirrely dan <laughs> deary they're funny i haven't really gotten into it as much as trailer park boys definitely listen to that i want to i've heard a lot of good things about eastbound and down oh bro, i gotta listen to that bro. kenny powers man bro east <laughs> any any of those shows have you seen our uh, righteous gemstones no that's another good one make sure you watch what's righteous gemstones i know you keep notes for him cam make sure you watch it. anything that danny mcbride does is just fucking great he's what we call a purebred hoss cat papers <laughs> and all like our boy like like um like Ernest, purebred yeah. hoss cat. Benny Burgess, purebred hoss cat. You know, like people, certain people, they just give off this vibe where you're like, what are they going to do next kind of thing? You know, like a little bit of wild card thing in them. And Danny McBride definitely has that with Eastbound and Down. Righteous Gemstones, you would love it. It's like a family that, um, and they're both on, um, I think it's called Max now. It's not, they took yeah, HB, they, HBO. I don't know why they took HBO off it. Cause I mean, shout out. I, was, I grew up big Sopranos guy. Like, cause oh, I, the Soprano. yeah, I, cause, they, cause, I they, watch cause they filmed all that shit by my house. Like yeah. that's my, that's what I grew up around. Um, but like righteous gemstones is like a family and John Goodman's in it. The guy, um, Adam, I forget what his last name is. Driver. He, he's the guy that plays, um, he's in uh, workaholics. The the, um, the baby face guy from Workaholics. God, I can't remember. It. It's but but he's in that too, and it's like it's a family that's got like a mega church, and it's like them. <laughs> the, the John Goodman's trying to pass it along to the three kids, and two of the three kids are Danny McBride and the dude from Workaholics, and it's based in Charleston, South Carolina, and it is fucking awesome. <laughs> you would love it. You any southern like my my girlfriend Erin got has got me on the so many shows and that one's great. There's also one it's called what the hell is it? It's like I think it's on Hulu. It's a guy that um is a baseball PA announcer. Brock it's like Brock it's, a, it's not Brock Meyer. It might be Brock Meyer. I care. It's something but it's just there's some good shows like that are that are awesome. We'll look it up after See, the this. The thing is, show. I'm picky about shows. I'm not a show guy as nearly as much movie. as I am a movie. Because Mo movies, it's one and done. Yeah, shows you're fucking invested. Yeah, an ADHD guy, you got to hold my attention. Buddy. Yeah, like I, I try to. Well, I, so I, what's like a new a new a new show that you're that you're on if you're picky about them? Honestly, I don't watch TV that much anymore. I, I don't have time. Yeah. So isn't it, that crazy to it's say? It's insane. Like it's nuts. Uh, big into podcasts now. Like uh, first of all, Ray's Rowdy podcast. I watch that religiously. Uh, congratulations with Chris D'Elia. I love that podcast. Yep. And then uh, bringing up, bringing them up again. My guitar player Jacob just put me on a uh, Kill Tony. Oh, that's a good one. That one's funny. It's a good one. So I love. And then of course, you know, uh, Joe Rogan Experience. But yeah. I, I I haven't been able to watch any shows. Or the last show I like watched watched it was like that I would stay up for. It was like The Walking Dead because that was filmed by my yeah. house. That was like right. Yeah. McDonough and Hampton and every everything, but it was like, yeah, I just don't have time. Okay, the so Office. Though, yeah, too. I was gonna. I was just gonna bring up the Office. Favorite Office character? Creed Bratton. Uh, that's exactly what my answer is. Creed, Creed Bratton. Bratton. Creed Bratton playing Creed Bratton. The grassroots yes. legend. Come on now. Talking about Woodstock and then. And, oh, do you <laughs> think, a lot of do couple you think, dudes. Do you, do you yeah. think? Do you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Um, did you? Um, 
my my girlfriend thinks that because her she's a big TV show person too. Yeah. She's she's like in the stand up comedy and everything, like really in the in the stand up. Does it as like a hobby. That is a great scene from The Office, by the way. I'm I'm holding back my laughter too. Um, she has this theory, and I know it's like a popular online theory, like Office theory. Do you think um, that Toby was the Scranton Strangler? Yes, I think he was too. He's got to be, dude. He's so mysterious and. I mean, he was a priest beforehand and then went to Costa Rica. Yeah, Come what was he doing in Costa Rica after the Scranton Strangler trial? He wasn't in Costa Rica. No? He was not in Costa Rica. No. He was back in Scranton. That's, I think so, too. Oh, yeah. I that think man. so, too. No, Creed Batten definitely takes the cake. Oh, dude, he's the fucking man. <laughs> I love it. So I missed that show. Um, it was great. It was so good. It was good. And then Parks and Rec was a really good one, too. Also a little bit of Parks and Rec. Ron Swanson. Ron Swanson's a dog, dude. Oh. He is a... <laughs> He's, that that scene where he's like getting the vegan bacon. Yes, he's just yeah. another, yeah. another. <laughs> just, just throwing him out. Trash. Yeah. That's great, dude. Well, dude, I'm super glad we were able to fucking make this happen Hell and yeah. have you on here. And um, I'm really excited to see where everything goes with you. And you have all these meetings. You've got a great, great friend um, oh, in man. your corner who's who's helping you out. And um, I'm honored that we got to one pop your your Nashville your first show in Nashville Cherry oh, yeah. at Luxurious Live Oak shout out Live Oak um, and pop your podcast Cherry like because totally. this is one of those one of those episodes where I'm it's one of those moments where I'm gonna be like 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 I've got to do with with Meg Maroney like I got to do with Dylan Marlowe like I've got to do with other other artists that I that we were able to become friends with and link up with early where. Be like, yeah, Landon, we were Landon Smith's first podcast. You know, it was, like, it was a dream of mine. That was like one of the check marks. Dude, I had well, that, that means a lot, man. It really does because you're. I don't even think you you realize the fucking mountain that you are climbing up and the fucking you're gonna get to you're gonna get to a point where it's like, oh fuck, this shit. Like where you're you're doing the bus thing, you do or you're doing the van thing, you're doing whatever, and like it's it's really it's really cool to get to know you Dude, as a 19 totally. year old. By by the time you're <laughs> you fast forward and you're you're playing some big ass shows, don't forget about us. Hey, bud. When when you come when on, you now, get I gotta there, be dude. somewhere for my 21st birthday. Dude, the 21st birthday, Cam. We're gonna talk about this after the podcast. <laughs> McElwain, you're involved in this. I hope you like Fireball because um, <laughs> that's that what Matt McElwain lives off of. He's got Fireball and. And and uh, skull and um, bad decisions in his bloodstream Amazing. at all times. That's what he does. But where do people go to find you if they're not following you already? Uh, Landon B. Smith Music on Instagram. What's your middle name? Blake. 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 Everybody said I should have gone with Landon Blake, and I was like, No, no. you're Landon Smith. I'm Landon Smith. Yeah. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Of the Smiths. On, got to. And then yeah, that's about it. I mean, I got a Snapchat, but no. Um, but no. <laughs> putting that out. <laughs> but no. <laughs> um, I don't have a Twitter. I got a TikTok. Should be Landon Smith music. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's, That's awesome, right. dude. Well, y'all be sure to follow our boy Landon Smith. Uh, stream the music, buy the music. If you're in the Southeast, do you guys do you have a website yet? No, that's what we got to work on. That's what you work on. Okay, so website's coming. Um, but if you're in the Southeast, I know we got a lot of Southern folks that watch this program and listen to this shit. Be sure to go out and see Landon live. Um, you guys will not regret it. And you'll be able to say, we saw this kid in 2023 at the Blue Room at the so and so, which, by the way, Blue Room, August 17th. Any of our South Georgia folks, anybody, Alabama, Florida, wherever the fuck you're at, if you're within a few <laughs> hour drive, get out there to the show and watch Landon and the Boys, first full band show since the high school days. Um, Y'all be sure to go check him out, and um, we like to have we'll, we'll have you back at Live Oak soon too because oh, yeah. we love having you there. And um, he just played Whiskey Jam, so he's doing some stuff up here in town as well. So y'all be sure to follow our boy Landon B Smith on Instagram and look him up on all the streaming platforms. Um, appreciate you guys listening, watching. Got to shout out our friends from Big Friendly Productions, Whale Tail Media, Saxman Studios, our boy Mitch Wallace with the Digital Marketing Agency. For more information on us, look up RaiseRowdy. Com. For our boy Landon over here, for Sweet Boy Behind the Camera, I'm Matt Burrill, and this has been Outside the Round. <laughs> I ain't never been the kind for staying one place for too long. I ain't never been the best at saying I love you to a girl I love. Only got a couple tricks on my sleeve. They usually just make